Phytophthora stays in soil. Save your tomato beds now before it's too late. When you harvest the last tomatoes and pull up the vines, it feels like the season's troubles finally end. The beds look empty, ready for a winter rest, and it is tempting to believe that the diseases vanish with the plants. But beneath the surface, hidden in roots, stems, and soil, the enemy remains. Phytophthora does not leave when you clean the bed. Its spores sit patiently, waiting for warmth and new crops to invade. If you do nothing now, the problem greets you next season with even greater strength. At Soil and Crop Central, we show that autumn work is not extra labor, but an investment. The care you give the soil right after harvest sets the stage for next year's success. When you protect the soil, you protect the harvest to come. Phytophthora never sleeps. Phytophthora is a patient survivor. Its spores hide inside roots and cling to plant debris. They wait through frost, snow, and silence only to awaken with spring warmth. The moment tomatoes or potatoes grow in the same soil, the spores activate. This is why you cannot treat autumn cleanup as a formality. When you act in fall, you break the cycle. When you ignore it, the disease holds the advantage before the first seedling even appears. All right, folks, let's get started with removing the remains. The first and most crucial action is clearing the bed. You do not leave behind a single infected leaf, stem, or fruit. Now, I know the temptation to throw residues into the compost is strong, but trust me, that is a mistake. Phytophthora spores do not die in compost, they survive the pile, and when you return the compost in spring, you return the disease. It's important to be thorough here. Next up, you remove every trace of infected plant material and burn it. This might feel a bit severe, but burning is the only way to stop the spores from recycling through the soil. By cleaning completely, you cut the chain of infection and give the ground a chance to recover. It's a necessary step to ensure a healthy garden. Now, let's talk about turning the soil for winter cleansing. After you clear the surface, you work the soil itself. Roots left in the ground act as small fortresses where spores hide. You pull them out by hand or with a fork, and then you dig deep. At a depth of about 20 centimeters, you turn the clods so that the top goes down and the bottom rises to the surface. This process helps cleanse the soil and prepare it for the next planting season. This action invites the winter frost to do its work. Cold air penetrates the upper soil, freezing it and destroying many spores. For generations, gardeners rely on this method because it allows nature to cleanse what human hands cannot reach. The soil breathes again, refreshed and renewed for the coming year. Once the soil is turned, it is time for disinfection. Copper remains the most reliable tool to weaken the pathogen's hold. You prepare the solution by dissolving 15 grams of copper sulfate in 10 liters of water. That is one flat tablespoon without a heap. You apply 2 to 3 liters of this solution for every square meter of soil. You always work on moist ground so that the solution spreads evenly and reaches deep into the bed. One treatment is enough. Through the winter copper binds into safe forms, harmless to spring crops yet devastating to the spores you target now. This step is decisive, but it is not the final one. Copper does not distinguish between harmful fungi and helpful bacteria. To restore balance, you must follow it with life. About a week to 10 days after the copper treatment, you introduce beneficial microorganisms. They are not chemicals, they are living allies. When you water the soil with these biological preparations, they begin to occupy the spaces that Phytophthora would otherwise claim. You prepare the working solution as directed and pour 1 liter per square meter. These microbes wake only when soil temperatures stay above 10 degrees Celsius, so you apply them in autumn while the soil is still warm. If the temperature has already dropped, you postpone this step until spring. After treatment, you cover the ground lightly with mulch or compost to preserve moisture and comfort the organisms. This stage is like filling an empty house with good neighbors. Once they settle in, they guard the soil against unwelcome guests. While microbes secure the underground, green manures protect the surface. You sow them as soon as the biological treatment is complete. These plants shield the soil from erosion, release root secretions that suppress pathogens, 
and add fresh organic matter when they are worked back into the ground. White mustard rises quickly and forms a dense green cover while its roots release compounds that hold fungi in check. Phacelia improves soil texture, suppresses pathogens, and during a mild autumn even feeds pollinators. Winter rye grows strong before snow survives the cold and in spring you cut it and work it into the soil. Its dense root system strengthens heavy soils and helps crowd out weeds. When you sow green manures you never leave a bed bare. The living cover becomes a shield for your soil and your future tomatoes. Another layer of defense comes with wood ash. You apply about 200 to 300 grams per square meter, either before digging or across the soil surface. Ash supplies potassium, works as a gentle antiseptic, and reduces excess acidity. Because Phytophthora thrives in acidic soil, this adjustment lowers the risk not just of blight but of several soil-borne diseases. Regular liming every four to five years keeps the soil balanced and resilient. When you follow this rhythm, the soil undergoes a full cycle of renewal. First you remove and burn all residues, then you dig deeply to expose spores to frost. You disinfect with copper, rest the soil, and introduce beneficial organisms. You sow green manures to protect the bed, and you strengthen the soil with ash before winter sets in. By the time snow falls, your soil is clean, alive, and shielded. It does not sleep vulnerable, it rests under protection. In spring, you continue by reapplying biological preparations as soon as the soil warms, keeping the balance in favor of life rather than disease. Even after careful autumn preparation, Phytophthora can still arrive from wind, rain, or even a neighbor's garden. That's why, you know, prevention is just as vital. You avoid planting tomatoes in the same place every year, instead rotating them with crops like cabbage, legumes, or root vegetables. You also keep tomatoes away from potatoes, since the two crops share the same enemy and can pass it back and forth if planted side by side. If you grow tomatoes in a greenhouse, you remember that the enclosed space really favors Phytophthora. So, you wash the frame in autumn, clean the covering with a soda solution, and treat any wooden parts with copper sulfate. And of course, ventilation becomes your ally because stagnant moisture creates the exact conditions this pathogen loves. Finally, you choose varieties and hybrids with strong resistance. While no tomato is fully immune, resistant plants withstand pressure much longer, giving you more time and stronger yields. You water in the morning so that soil and leaves dry by evening, and you rely on mulch to preserve moisture without feeding the pathogen. Phytophthora never disappears completely but you reduce it to harmless levels when you combine these steps. Each action, clearing, digging, disinfecting, repopulating, sowing, and strengthening, builds on the next, creating a full system of protection. When you follow through you do not just react to the disease, you prevent it from gaining the upper hand. Soil is alive, and when you care for it, it responds with abundance. Autumn is the moment to repay the soil for its work through summer, giving it rest, allies, and protection. When spring comes, the reward is visible in every strong sprout and every healthy fruit. If you find this guide helpful, remember to subscribe to Soil and Crop Central and share it with fellow gardeners. The more we protect our soil together, the richer and healthier our harvests become.